Leather has been made and used for thousands of years. It is a really versatile material, and with that comes many uses. While our production methods have varied, today there are two primary tanning methods used, and that's vegetable tanning and chrome tanning. We'll check out each with examples, so you'll have an understanding what they're about and which type of leather might work better for your project. We'll start by looking at the function of tanning and the methods. So the tanning process for leather essentially functions to infuse the leather with substances that will slow and ideally stop the natural decay of the fibers. This is going to allow them to function as a material instead of an organic material that will eventually rot. To accomplish this, several different methods have been used over the years. These most commonly include brain tanning using organic compounds, alum tanning using aluminum salts, vegetable tanning using organic tannins from plants and tree bark, and chrome tanning using chromium salts. Each has advantages and disadvantages ranging from cost to time to effectiveness, even to the feel of the leather that it produces. Most commonly today, we're going to find leather available in vegetable tan varieties as well as chrome tan varieties. So let's check out these two more closely. Vegetable tanning. This is the leather that is usually thicker and stiffer. It's sturdy and durable, often used for belts and comes in a lot of you know, great thicknesses. And it can also have its surface stamped and imprinted with designs, toolings and carvings that will essentially stay in there. And that is in part due to its thicker, stiffer properties. This accounts for around 10% of the leather produced globally today. And generally, the tanning agents used to make this leather are tannins, naturally occurring astringents from plants and tree bark. In raw hides, the tannins bind to the collagen, covering them up. And the collagen comprises part of the internal fiber structure of leather. This makes them less susceptible to bacterial growth, less water soluble, and more pliable and flexible. Essentially, it's what turns a raw hide into finished leather. And this vegetable tanning process can, depending on the type of process used, take anywhere from two days in an accelerated version up to 30 days or more in a standard process. It's usually carried out in large pits or in large rotating drums, which help agitate the leather within the tannin solution. The hides are exposed to stronger and stronger levels of the tannins throughout the process. This is why it could take two to 30 days per exposure to those tannins. Sometimes there are multiple runs of that chained together. So it can take sometimes two to six months to produce one piece of vegetable tan leather, depending on the process that's used. And some of the barks that are used to extract the tannins in this process include chestnut, hemlock, mangrove, oak, redool, the wattle, and mimosa. It comprises about a 20 step process. However, there are a few core main functions and they're gonna be curing, fleshing, tanning, splitting, coloring, conditioning, and finishing. Within each of those, there are even further steps, but we'll keep it high level for now. But each of those steps adds a further function to the preservation, characteristics, and finished quality of the leather. Tanning can be done manually in small batches, in very basic conditions, for example, in a yard or in a field, or it can be done in large quantities on a commercial level in advanced tanning facilities. Chrome tanning. This is the leather that is usually softer and more flexible. It accounts for around 90% of the leather that is produced globally today. During the mid 1800s, scientists were looking for alternatives to tanning leather. During this time, Frederick Knapp discovered that chromium could be used to tan leather. By using chrome salts, animal hides could be tanned in days rather than months. This resulting leather was soft, supple, durable, and more water resistant than traditional vegetable tan leather. By the late 1800s, chrome tan leather grew in popularity, as did synthetic dyes, which meant that the leather could be dyed much more vibrant colors 
and vegetable tan leather. With the faster production time, usually only a few days, it also met the innovative demands of the Industrial Revolution. So now, chrome tan leather accounts for nearly 90% of all leather produced. It comprises about a multi-step process with these main functions, very similar in overall to veg tanning. However, the types of chemicals used varies. So as a single piece of leather might run through chrome baths multiple times, depending on the desired result, it's still gonna be a lot faster than vegetable tanning, generally around just a few days. These are the main functions, curing, fleshing, tanning, splitting, coloring, conditioning, and finishing. Chrome tanning is most efficiently done in larger commercial facilities, though at times it can be performed in smaller, more manual tanneries as well. When you're planning a leather project, the type of material selected will play a huge part. Vegetable tan leather usually develops a nice patina over time and can be slightly more expensive and a little more time intensive to maintain. While chrome tan leather is a little less expensive, with more color and finish options available, as well as being a little more readily available since most leather today is chrome tanned. Whichever you choose, there can be some amazing things created with them. If you have any questions, let us know. If you have any preferences or experiences to share, please do. And there you have it. Until next time.